New England Candle Pins is made possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candle Pin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By FICO's Family Bowl Drum in Franklin, Massachusetts. Visit FICO'sBowl.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching. From Fico's Boladrome in Franklin, Massachusetts, it's New England Candle Pins Summer Tournament 2014. In our first Elite Eight show, Franklin's Mike Legender rolls against Rich Kochi from Saugus. And in game two, Franklin local Dan Legge takes on pro veteran Skip Easterbrooks. Now let's roll with your host, Jay Horrigan. And welcome to New England Candle Pins, our summer championship series. This is one of our Elite Eight shows. Uh, we're here with our first two competitors in our Elite Eight. Rich Kochi, our number four seed, and Mike Legendra, even close. Yep, number five. All right, all right. Okay, Rich and uh, Mike, do you guys have uh, any trash talk? Do you have anything you have to no, say? No, I, I, mean, I just bowled him on Friday night, so uh, I know how, how good he bowls, and he knows how good I bowl, so... It's going to be a good match. And do you have any trash talk for Mike? Uh, no, I, 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 know, I know he's a good bowler. Uh, I bowled him last night, so I know what he can do. This is kind of weak. Um, I I could tell you what he just said about you. No, nah, no, it's, it's fine. We're good. Do you want me to tell you what he said? No, it's fine. Well, I know a lot of trash. I might be spreading it later. So we will be back with our first match of our Elite Eight show between Mike and Rich in just a moment. What is community without community support? Without community access? Without communication that creates a common bond? You can make community by making Community TV. Contact your public access Community TV Center. Learn how you can help, because you can. Volunteer today. When you support your Community TV, you also support your community. back here at Pico's Bolodrome ready for our first Elite Eight match. And again, I'm proud to be joined by Dave Chesterkov, our two-time defending champ. And Dave, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. And we should have a great match today. Yes, we should. We got two good bowlers here, and, uh, Mike Legendre and Rich Kochi. <laughs> good use of the French pronunciation. <laughs> okay, Mike will be up first. Good luck, guys. I might have to go with the French, Le Gendre. <laughs> Le Gendre. Go ahead. All right, so Mike opens just missing the head pin. Drops six, it appears. Yep, six. Just by the, uh, just by the head pin here. Taking out the three pins, so he's got three pins to clean up. He's got the one, eight, ten, no wood. Just plows the head pin straight back for uh, for a monastate box. Looking to bounce back here. Just off the head pin right. He drops four. It was a big cluster, the one, two, seven, eight, nine, ten. Some wood behind uh, the head pin here. Just off the head pin again. Mike was on our first show of the summer series where he defeated Todd Trumpus. That is correct. Ooh. I don't think he likes Legendre. <laughs> 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 I don't know, I think I'm gonna act. Oh, 
Richie also uh, missing a hit bit on his uh, start. Far left. Takes out just three. Alright, Rich has uh, some uh, cleaning up to do himself. Uh, the one, two, eight. Excuse me, one, two, nine. Takes out for a nine box. Neither bowler has hit the head pin on the first ball. And it shows. Looking to come back here. Oh boy. I think these bowlers are a little too friendly with each other. They don't wanna they don't wanna beat yeah. each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we call that the full Worcester folks. Wow. So often and unfortunately that you usually just pluck the head pin straight back like that. So a rough stop for both bowlers. And oddly enough, uh, they're both tied at 14. Now they both can really start bowling. Yeah, yeah, now they got all the butterflies out of the way, being in the Elite Eight here. In the first taping, it, uh, Michael Legenda was on the head pin 50% uh, of the time on his first ball, and Rich was 60%. Right. And they both roll to 116. Mikey nearly converts that tricky spear. That's what we're used to seeing from both bowlers. A lot of uh, pin action. Yeah. Mikey cleans up for a good 10. Oh, tough break. Leaves the spread eagle. Mikey uh, just taking out the seven pin on that ball. Appears to be uh, rushing it because uh, usually you shouldn't be waiting for your bowling balls to come back. If he settles in, uh, I think uh, I think he'll do fine. Makes a good eight box here. So Mike has 32 after four frames. Looking to get his uh, first mark here, just missing the head pin right. Gets a good break, drops eight, leaving the one nine. Some wood uh, behind the head pin here and to the left of the nine. It's interesting with the electronic scoring, uh, the monitor's marking it as nine. Although yeah, sometimes that happens. Where it's not an issue, he ends up getting a spare, but if it had been on a spare, they would have had to uh, adjust that. Yeah, thankfully I keep a hard copy down here with right. the official score anyway, just in case. And we've seen that happen on previous shows where one of the pins have been knocked off the, the sensor. Yeah, yeah. The, and these you guys lasers, have had to adjust the scoring. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, these pins are very skinny. The lasers are obviously, uh, you know, they're pretty, pretty finite. You know, we, and Dave, we've talked about that in previous shows that uh, you've been kind enough to sit in with me that um, that that gets to the whole uh, sportsmanship of the bowling you know where the, the bowlers make sure that everything's done correctly and I, I've compared it to um, golf and it appears uh, we have a just exactly one of those issues with, okay. the, uh, with the score here Mike Legendra put, pointing out something on the scoreboard. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was an error. What was the uh, issue there, Dave? It appeared to not read his second ball, so it gave him a, an eight fill instead of a five.
Does everything seem to be fine now? Or? Yeah, I think they're gonna because it's in a mark. Uh, I think they're gonna go up go up to the desk and have that corrected. Okay. But through all that drama here, Mike is uh, Mike is bowling. Uh, almost makes the half Worcester. Mikey looking to bounce back after a tough uh, first half here. Right in the pocket. Oh, a little oh. too heavy again. He's a clip wing spread eagle. Took out the 10 pin in that uh, lead. Mike, you still got some pinning to do. Ideally, you want to pin well, even though you might. Oh, there's a great nine. It's a nice shot. Very nice shot. Yeah, five. So we do have an issue with this, the electronic scoring that we're going to have to get fixed. Rich coming back right in the pocket, drops eight, leaves the nice ball five, there. nine. Just off to the left there, just missed. Both bowlers seem to be off their game this uh, so far. Not sure if it's uh, if it's nerves or what. Now the question in the scoring is back between the third and the fourth frame for Rich. As Rich picks up uh, four pins there in the sixth frame. Shit the head been here. You got a spread. You'll see that uh seen that leave often so far today on the show, uh on lane sixteen. It's gonna make these bowlers work for every pin here. And only a seven box. So <laughs> amazingly through uh, six frames. Mike Legender with a score of 50, Rich Kochi with a score of 51. What do you have uh, for 51? 51. Okay. Seven there for Mike. Mikey drops seven. Ooh, nearly makes it. Every pin is important in this match right now. And he gets nine. Mikey looking to finish strong here, right in the pocket, what a hit. Oof. Our first big nine drop, nice piece of wood, just a 10 pin. Big mark here. It's all over, there it goes, all right. Mikey setting himself up to have a chance. That's Mike's first mark, correct? That is Mike's first mark. That's really Mike's first leave when he's uh, hit the head pin that he could have realistically shoot at. So Rich has some uh, some work to do. Only being up one and opposite a mark in the uh, eighth frame. Off to the right, seems to be off his game to, uh, today. 
But this is a makeable spear. Just off to the left. He might steal Ooh. it. Oh. Saw that wood come out and take the head pin. I thought he yeah. might get it. Leaving just a three pin. Just by. Still one pin lead for Rich, but he's opposite the mark that Mike put up in this frame. So all important to match this mark. Oh, no wow. luck. Just thought the head pin left. Jeez. Carries the two pin You don't somehow. see that happen. You don't see this happen too often. To the right drops uh, six more, leaving the one seven nine. No wood, tricky shot to clean up. Just off to the headpin again. Oh, oh, right. Just off the headpin right. Drops eight. So uh, with that, Mike Legendre actually takes a one pin lead. One pin lead, correct? And he's on a mark. With a mark. Yep. And he throws oh. a big hammer in it. What a ball. That's huge right there. Yeah. Looking for the double. Looking for the double, oh. and he gets it. What a great pitch there. As much as he struggled the first uh, seven frames, he's turned it on and found it here, these last three. Looking for the triple. Triple, looking for it, and he gets the triple like it's nothing. Three in a row. Ho oh, hum. <laughs> Jeez. Looking for the four bagger. This will be the first four bagger on the show. Yeah. Yeah. And he gets a single pin. Yes, Jerry's the three <laughs> somehow. <laughs> wow. wow. That's a heck of a great finish. Not bad. Yes, indeed. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really going to force that is uh, Richie pretty, to... Uh, pretty impressive there. Yeah, no, that, that, that finish from Mike actually closes Rich Kochi out. He could have he could have got four in a row, four strikes in a row, and uh, lost by two. Yeah. Rich Kochi uh, looking to finish with, uh, with a little respect here. And a boy. Richie just off the head pin again. Folks, for you at home, Richie was 60% on the hit pin with his first ball. The first match went 116. This one, he's only 20% on the first ball on the head pin. And he's going to struggle home with a 90. All important that that first ball is in the pocket. So Rich ends with the 98. 130 to 98. Mike will win this match and move on to our final four show, which will come up in two weeks. So we will be back to talk to our bowlers in just a moment. Indeed.
forwards. Uh, guys, that was an interesting match. Yes. Both of you seem to get off to kind of a slow start. Then around the seventh frame or so, the fireworks started. Yeah. Pins were flying, yeah. everything. Um, you know, you, you just, Rich, it, it just seems like things just weren't working well. Then pins flew, and then... Yeah. Mike just went nuts. He, he, threw a big, he threw a big triple strike, and now you can't beat triple strike. I had the big mock in the, the second and third, then after that, I just turned down the, turned down the hill, but you know what, he's a good bowler, so. Yeah, I, trem I, tremendous bowler, yeah. but, you, but you are yourself. Yeah, I, you know, I wish him luck in the, in the next round, you know what I mean? So. Well, you did very well, and like I said, it just, it, it seemed like both of you just, all of a sudden, it, things just weren't working for either of you, and then all of a sudden things clicked. And you're right, Mike, through the triple, and, and it was impossible to be. Right, it sure was. So. Well, hey, it was awesome having you here. I hope I hope we have you here again. It was uh, great that yeah. you brought the entire crowd, yeah, yeah, the family, all the yeah. Saugus and everything. The yeah. whole, the, everybody came down. Um, was awesome. The one person that attacked me, I was okay with that. Uh, <laughs> it's a good way to get the day going sure and everything. Is. Woke yep. me up, so right. was awesome. It's tough though when you run up against a, a, a buzz saw like that with the triple. Mike, you, you, like I said, both of you, a yeah. little slow start, and then yeah, you got going. Uh, yeah, the, on 16, both of us were punch out the headpin, punch out the headpin. So I just kept on moving over, kept throwing the same ball, and I got the spare on, on that one lane. And then, I, you know, got on 15 through the strike. I'm like, okay, I just need at least another mark to put pressure on him. And then I threw the double. You know, that's that's hard to, to come back from. Right. And, and it was within three or four pins, the, the match. So right. I already put 10 pins on my, on my fill. So... I'm up 14, so I'm like, okay. And then after I got the triple, you know, that's, you know, now, you know, it's it's hard to beat. So, and you know, you know, he's a good, great bowler, and you know, I wish him when he comes back in the next in the next taping, and I'll see him then. The the question is, I know that I'm I'm wondering, you bowl the triple, yep. you hit the three in the row. Yep. What happens? You just a single pin? Yeah, Couldn't yeah. you at least knock down two? Uh, I tried. You know, I hit the three pin. You know, and the three pin. You know, I was right on the right side of the pocket, all you know, on, on 16. So, and it just just missed it by a little bit of the yeah. headband, and it happens. Yeah, missed it by a little bit. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, he could have knocked down two. Right. At least two pins, yeah. maybe. I, uh, that's what we well, would have hoped for. I didn't want the four back, you know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we only knocked out one <laughs> pin. Three strikes. Wait, it was a spare. Triple. Three strikes in a row, and then, and then one pin. Yeah. What kind of bowler does that? Me? I don't know. Well, I don't know. I know on my when I used to play Atari bowling, I I could knock down more pins than one. Okay. So. Yeah, but that was ten pin. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. Ten pin with bumpers. Oh, yeah. So that's what I could do. Okay. Well, congratulations. You. You're going to be moving on to our championship show, okay. which will come up in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll see who you're bowling. Our next match, we'll have our. Uh, our next Elite Eight match will be back uh, with those two bowlers in a couple of minutes. The winner of that, you'll be playing in our uh, Final Four show for a chance to go to the championship, okay? Guys, thank you both again. It was a great match, okay? And we'll be back in just a moment. back folks to our second match of our elite eight show uh we've got dan leggy 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 whatever dan against skip easterbrooks i don't know what i'm doing it's a first time for everything um wait skip was our number 16 seed coming in initially and skip uh, you bowled our our highest score through our preliminary round with the 158, as I remember. And you get to go up against Dan, who bowled the 130, so two of our highest bowlers. Well, he's a good, he's an upcoming star, this kid. Yeah. Absolutely, he yeah. did a great job. He, he beat, beat Mike, uh, Mike Cut, Kustak, Kustak. Kustak. I did, never got his name right either. This just, I'm gonna stop using names. Yeah. You beat that bowler from Dudley. Yep, I did. You did with the 130. Did a very yeah, good job. You came on at the end. Yep, eight, nine, and tenth. We're big boxes. That's, that won me the match. Absolutely. So this should be a good match. Two of our highest scoring uh, bowlers in uh, our uh, round of 16. So should be a great match. We're looking forward to it. We'll be back with the start of it in just a moment.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're ready for this match between Skip and Dan. Two easy names to pronounce, and I will pronounce them correctly the remainder of the show. Skip will be up first. Skip, good luck. We're all counting on you. Skip, you all over the head pin. Drops nine. Skip picking up where he left off. My co-hosts with me, Richie Myrick and Dave Chesterkov. Can't get over the fact that I cannot pronounce a simple name. <laughs> His name is Dan. <laughs> what did I say? Uh, I have no idea at this point. <laughs> Skippy opens up with a great span. Oh, he said Dave. Skip Easter books with a mark. <laughs> who did I? Who did I? Who did I say was Dave? I don't know. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Skip on the mark. <laughs> Drop seven leaves the the three seven eight with a piece of wood. I don't know what I've done. I've lost complete control. Skip has a uh, piece of wood in front of the three pin here. I think if he goes right of it, I think he can make it. Nah, he went left of it. Oh. Just a nine box. So Skippy opens up with 26 through two. he has got some housekeeping to do from Skip's previous frame on this lane. And still got some housekeeping. Both Skip and Dan in the uh, sweet round of 16 both very well. Skip throwing the highest score on the show so far today with a 158. Dan with a flurry of a finish with a 130 to beat out his man. Dan just off the head pin, leaves the 1 9 10. Piece of wood out there looking not really in play anymore. If I was him, I would have waited for that wood to stop because it might have rolled back into play for him. Well, at any rate, it's an 8 box. Indeed. The match prior to this, you saw Mike Legendre finish with a flurry of a finish with a spare triple strike to beat out Rich Kochi. Dan on the head pin gets a funny looking nine drop, he but it works. the 10 pin. It was almost the 7 10 for, for a second, but now he leaves just the 7 pin. And uh, Ooh, just, just by. By it. I thought he had it off the hands, but yeah. uh, he knew he didn't. Sometimes I think going that fast kind of works against you sometimes. Almost Russian. Yeah, exactly. Well, we'll see what Easter Brooks can do here. 26 through 2. Skip you all over the head pin again. Drops 8. Leaves the 610 with the piece of wood in front of the 6. It's got a little space there, so you can't be too cute with it. Yeah. <clears throat> so you got to hit the wood nice and hard. Yep, there it goes. Go. It's a good shot. Skips a 120 average. He's a 188 high single and a monster 490 triple. That's way up there. Yes, it is. Skippy working on a spare. Whoa. Wide left, just gets three. Even Skippy knows it was, it was out there. <laughs> Look at him bounce back here. This is makeable. Just missing the head pin right. <clears throat> Still has some work to do. Still has four pins standing. One, two, nine, ten. Takes out two. Dan looking to gain some, yeah, gain some ground. He's got an opportunity here. Gets a break. 
Oh, gets a big oh, break. Oh. oh, he's got that tricky wood out front. That looks like you can sneak right by it. Go right at the four pin. You should carry yep. the shot. Oh, and he gets nice. it. Good shot from Dan. I think if you just touch that wood on the wood as you go by, I don't. I'm not sure that it would have taken the shot. Mm -hmm. So you really had to be precise. Dan right in the pocket on his fill. Finds the head pin. A piece of wood actually does him a favor by getting out of play. Now he has a shot here at the five seven. <clears throat> Yeah, he hit it right where he needed to. Off the red line on the five, it shoots that ball and covers up, takes out that seven pitch. So Dan with a very good two boxes. Just about evens the matchup after uh, the theoretical fill and his spare. Skippy on the head pin. I would took a big hop down the lane. Yes, it did. He, uh, he kind of let it go a little early. <clears throat> He's got the two, three, four, seven, but there's a piece of wood there. He plays it inside of three, oh. and he buried it. That's that's the absolutely the perfect spot to play that shot. Absolutely. <clears throat> what a great shot by Skip. Got some housekeeping again, courtesy of Skip. Skip's just going to go ahead and play through it. Really? Oh, okay, I see. Skip's got to regroup here. Skip, you on the head pin? That's, oh, thank he God! That got that seven pin to fall, and that, that yeah. could that could be the, the difference in the shot here. He leaves the the three, five, nine, ten, and there's wood behind the five pin. So if he carries the ten pin, he should make the shot. Ooh, cherries right through it. Finishes with that nine bucks. So he's got 72 through six. Dan trying to do some housekeeping. Somebody should just go get it. Pin in the air and his fill. It's a very big fill. Drops nine, looking at just a three pin. And right he makes it. it. So Dan with three marks in a row. Dan just off to the head pin to the left. It only gets four. But he does take the lead with that fill. That's a good nine. Very good nine. It'll take a five pin lead into the final four frames. Let's get back up on lane 16 where he's marked every time. He's going to continue that trend. He's got to make a tough one here. He's yeah. got the four horsemen to the right with the seven pin. Ooh. Takes out just the head pin, leaving four. Ooh. Top seven. Threw two good balls there and just took out the two pins, unfortunately. That's 
the name of the game sometimes. And now Skip would really do himself a favor if he could post a mark here in the eighth ring. Skip getting a great break off the head pin here. Drops eight, leaving just a one two. At that 10 pin fell just at the last second there, it makes it a much more manageable shot. And he's on it. And he makes it. Made it on the outside. So that's a very big mark for Skip. He sets him up coming home. Danny all over the head pin. Drops eight himself, leaving the two four. <clears throat> Just missed off to the left. Kills it for the ten though. Picks up three more pins even without that mark, because Skippy had a seven in that frame, so that helps. Ideally you want to match the mark here. Oh, that's, what a ball uh, there. That's one way to match the mark. That's a bomb. Right in the pocket. And there they go. Mr. Brooks now down eight. Rolled his hand over the ball there. Punches out the half Worcester. Great oh, 10, that nice is. Pick up. Skippy's gonna have to mark here if yeah, he at least. To, uh, wants to try to have any chance. Right. Right in the pocket. Leaves the check mark. <laughs> nice to see that catching on. Yes, yes. I, We've got I all like kinds it. of lingo for those of you watching at home. You might not have any idea what we're talking about from time to time, but that's okay. You'll get used to it. Oof. Oh, I made a good run at it. And Skip takes the triangle out of the check mark, which again is probably something foreign to everybody but us, but <laughs> it is what it is. And Skip with just the nine, so Dan really all he has to do is keep the ball in the lane for a couple of boxes, and he should have this all set. Pocket, lose the spread eagle. Six out of it for the fill. And that gives him the win already with one box to go. The question is just how high is it going to be? Cherries the six pin somehow. That was kind of a weird one. I'd like to see that one again, but uh, still no no matter in the win. Yep, so uh, Dan Leggy will move on. He defeats Skip Easterbrooks 122 to 110, and he will move on to our championship show where he will 
join uh, Mike Legendra and the next two people from our next uh, Elite Eight show. So we'll be back to talk to our bowlers in just a moment. Welcome back. And we're back with our bowlers, Dan and Skip. And uh, I apologize for laughing. Skip just said uh, that this is, we were saying this is the end of his day. And he, he threw out that this is the end of his career, which it is not. No, no. Uh, just a, t- a tough match there yeah. for you, uh, Skip. Yeah, I, I couldn't get on the headpin like I was in the first match. But, but that's fine. He's, a, he's upcoming style, like I said. He throws a good ball. He does. He yeah, did. He, it, he did a very good job. Yeah. Very smooth bowler and everything. Oh, and, and you were just like you said, just off of just a hair. Yeah. Which is fine. That's fine. Next time. We'll yeah. Happens. Yep. And I'm sure you'll be back. I'm sure you'll be back. So uh, for coming in uh, second place uh, in this match, we do have twenty five dollars for you. Twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. 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 Awesome. Close. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Make sure you look in that envelope because okay. it it is empty. <laughs> okay. uh, so enjoy it. Don't spend it all in no, one place. Thank you. Uh, Dan, another win. Great job. You uh, move on to our final four show. Uh, you move on with uh, Mike Legendra. Uh, so we've got two of our four uh, final four uh, people determined. You're one of them. Chance to win it all. So that's great. Yeah, obviously. It's Con- very great. Congratulations. Uh, how do you feel? You bold. I. I had my ups and downs. I was off, and then I just went. When I got on the head pin, I got on when I needed to, and I came out with the victory. Thank God, Skip was off. And went, and he just threw 158, so you know he can bowl. So, absolutely, yeah, it, it was. And you had another uh, uh, three uh, frame, the th- yep. th- third, fourth, and fifth frame. You had three spares in a row, and obviously that really helped. Yep, definitely. Yep. Well, here you go. As a winner, you win a hundred dollars, and you get that in an empty envelope as well. Uh, it's nice. invisible hundred dollars, so you could spend that in a couple of places. Uh, so enjoy that. So Dan will be moving on to our final four show, which you'll see in a couple of weeks. Uh, so you make sure to stay tuned for that. Like I said, that should be on in about two weeks. Uh, that'll wrap it up for this Elite Eight show. I'd like to thank uh, my co-hosts today, Richie Myrick and Dave Chestercove. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Sophie, Dave. I'd like to thank Matt for. Nah, I don't really want to thank Matt. No, I do want to thank Matt Ferrara uh, and Pete Fasciano and everybody that watched and helped make this show possible and Fico's Bolodrome. And I'd like to thank my wife, my children, uh, my mother, my father, my brothers, my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, my roommate in college, my other roommate in college my friends from high school, my friends from elementary school. Okay, we're out. Pins is made possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candlepin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By FICO's Family Bowler Drum in Franklin, Massachusetts. Visit FICO'sBowl.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.